Hello, I'm Julie Samako, owner of Southern Charm Rees, where we make beautiful rees and teach you how to make and sell them. In this video, let's make a beautiful spring tulip wreath. So let me put this camera down. Look, y'all, look how cute this Easter wreath is. Florals, oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? I just love this. So let me get this out of the way. We're probably gonna use our easel. And then also we made this. These are um, items that we made in our wreath making of the month club group. I just love this one. Such a trendy boho wreath. Um, those, those wreaths are really uh, popular right now, those hoop wreaths. So let's go ahead and put that down here. I'm gonna be working with the 16 inch grapevine wreath. Okay, and then I've got this spray that we're gonna be using. It's a magnolia spray. I like to use multiple um, greenery in my wreaths for texture. So we've got this. I'm gonna go ahead and fluff this out. Just give this a little bit of a bend in shape. Everything that comes, you know, from out of the country, you need to get a little love to because it's been flattened. And then we're gonna go ahead and trim this off. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'm gonna look on my wreath and I'm gonna find a place that looks um, not pretty, as pretty. So this is a little bit thinner up here than it is down here. So I'm gonna use this for my design area because I can always cover up that with my florals. So let me just grab that and take that off. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my stem into my glue. It's over here on the side. This is my glue pan that has my hot glue in it. All right, so we're just gonna put this in right here. And now I'm gonna grab a zip tie and secure that end so that it won't flop around too much. So we're just gonna zip tie this right here to our wreath base. This just gives a little more security to this stem. Just like that. All right, so we've got one side done. We're gonna do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Just gonna give a little bit of a bend right there. Okay. And then we'll zip tie this side down. All right, y'all. So look, we're off to the whole races with our. <laughs> that was simple, huh? All right, let's go ahead and add our bow. <clears throat> I'm gonna use a two and a half inch ribbon. All right, let's go ahead and determine the length of our tail. And we're going to make our loops are gonna be six inches, okay? So if, that, if you're using a bow maker, it's six inches. And if you're using the mat like I do to freehand it, it's gonna be 12 inches on the mat. So you're gonna take that and you're gonna loop it towards the back and pinch, just like that, and then twist. Let me get my ribbon holder out so I can unravel this just a little bit easier. All right, so now we're gonna do 12 inches on our mat and take it towards away from us 
and we're going to pinch it into our two fingers. Then we're gonna flip and rotate. Twist away from us and then lay it down for another six inch loop. Pleat, twist towards us. And another 12 inches. Pleat. twist and then another 12 inches so all of these were the exact same length and then I'm just fluffing the loops I'm gonna make an airy bow with this all right so here is the other tail and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a little um, I call them tendrils they're just little um, streamers on the back side okay all right so we've just created our two loop bow i mean our five loop bow and i'm going to take some florist wire then i'm just going to flip this over lift up my finger and secure the wire around If you are watching, please, you know, and you're interested in floral designing and wreath making, make sure to follow our page for more DIY. We're going to be doing some Easter projects, and I'm just going to untwist this a little bit more so that I can get this seated a little bit further down into the grapevine wreath. All right, here we go. So we're going to use the wire that we secured our bow with and this is going to go right in the center this is where I take the wire through the grapevine don't go around the edge of the whole you know uh, the whole um, girth of the grapevine because then you won't be able to get your florals through it. Okay, just gonna twist the wire on the back. I'm gonna dovetail these just a little bit more. There we go. Go ahead and dovetail these. I'm loving this blue check. It's very um, cheerful, isn't it? After the winter months to have something cheerful. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna add are the tulips. So here are our tulips. Man, they look bright on the, uh, <laughs> the screen. Pink, hot pink. Y'all, thank y'all so much for y'all who are welcoming our new followers and watchers. Okay, these are, um, they're foam and, see, can you tell the texture of them? So they look real. It's hard to tell on the screen, but it's a foam and it looks real. All right, I'm gonna dip these over here in my glue and I'm gonna start placing these tulips on our wreath. And I'm gonna probably get all wrapped up in glue. The glue strings are always a thing to have to deal with when I'm designing for you guys. 
I need to get a setup where the glue's over there and not behind me. All right, so we're just going to keep adding, making sure we're spacing our tulips. The trick to this for placement is to not have it all on the same plane. All right, so you're wanting to make sure that you're st stacking them to where they have their own spacing. So spacing is one of the techniques I teach in our Wreath of the Month Club group. All right, I think we've got some yellow. Maybe we need a couple more on the opposite side. I always, when I'm making, forget the side away from me. Let's do one right through here. And then I'm looking to make sure it looks even. Maybe one down here, y'all. Okay, so here, so wreath making is layering. You could stop here if you wanted. You could stop here. <clears throat> But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some greenery. Some of this little uh, twig-like greenery. Just adds another texture. I like the garden look. Make sure to define your line. Let's do some under the bow. Just adding these greenery pieces for texture. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna add is blue flowers. Just gonna get unwrapped a little bit with our glue. So these are called corn flowers. Corn flowers. Has anybody seen those growing in nature? I think this would look pretty with our blue ribbon, don't you? Oh my gosh, Margie, you guys are gonna make me blush. Y'all are so awesome. You guys, I, when I started, let's just talk a little bit about um, experience and stuff, right? I don't want, um, I didn't always do this. Didn't always do this. I started out, like most of you, just wanting something really pretty on my home door, you know, my door, and I just didn't want to pay that price tag. <laughs> there are hundreds of dollars. And I'm like, no. It was a single, we had a, you know, a single income family, and I was a stay-at-home mom, and I was like, we'll, we'll make it. We, we, we can make that. Um, and that's how I got started. And I started making, um, you know, my wreaths from my front door. And then my neighbors wanted to buy them, like right off the front door. Can we ha can I buy that from you or can you make me one like it? And I'm like, um, okay. And I thought that was the weirdest thing. Like, God, I can't believe somebody is actually trying to buy that wreath. And so I made one for a customer, you know, for um, a neighbor. She was, you know, a customer then, and, um, you know, word got around and people wanted me to make wreaths for them. Somebody said, you should start an Etsy shop. And I was like, what the heck is Etsy? And then I started an Etsy shop, not knowing what I was doing, scared that it was going to fail because... I was, a, we were a single income family. You know, it takes, takes money to buy some of these resupplies. <laughs> and then, you know, I just kept making. So you see how that's on the same plane? That's not what I want. I'm just gonna push that one in a little bit more. Try to get it a little bit off the plane. And then, um, Rest is history. So I started making wreaths and I had an, a website and people would come to the website 
and they wouldn't buy. And I'm like, why are they coming to my website and they're not buying? Like, I suck. <laughs> I'm not doing this right. Something's not, they don't like me. They don't like it. The cost is too much. Y'all know you've probably done the same exact thing to yourself that we assume if the buyer doesn't want to buy it, there's got to be something wrong with us um, or our technique or design or and so I realized that something just popped into my head that they were coming for, people were coming for inspiration. So they're coming to see how I make them to get inspired to make their own. And once I realized that, it was an aha moment. I'm gonna say that I think, I think it was a definitely a God moment. When I realized that people were coming for inspiration and they wanted to make their own. I'm like, well, let me just see if I can teach them. And so I started teaching, this was in 2011. And my reads were nothing like this when I started teaching. Over the years I've learned what works, what doesn't work, what sells, what doesn't sell, who my customers are. which is super important. Saves a lot of time and money when you know who your customers are. Let's see if I can get that one right there. All right, I'm not liking how this one's hidden. Let's see. Isn't this cute with the blue? Does it give you a little country vibe? Thank you, Teresa. Y'all, who's, who's gonna try this? This didn't take long, did it? You don't need a lot of product for this style. So you could take some of this and incorporate that in it. Um, you know how I think that this, one of these leaves might be in the way. If you ever want to move something up here, you can cut off a leaf from down here and then put it up there because there is just a little bit of a hole right there. All right, so let's see. Take this and just bend. See how it looks like a stick and it's plastic. <clears throat> Let's see if I like that. Maybe one or two. You might not be able to see it on camera. It adds just a little more interest and texture. Don't have a flat wreath, so you want to fluff it up. fun. Remember I said it's layering. So if you don't want to do this, this, these little stick things, you don't have to, you could just end it at the tulips, couldn't you? 
That's too long. I'll have to redo that one. Don't want it coming out too far right here. You see how my hand hits it? It's also personal taste. My customers like the different look. Let's take this out a little bit more. One more piece. And I'm going to put some right up here at the very top to try to fill that little hole. Make sure you have your line established. And if you don't, fill it in. Okay, y'all, I think we're done. How fun was that? This definitely puts me in a mood ready for springtime. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you like our channel. If you wanna find more tutorials, make sure to head over to our website at southerncharmries.com. Just go to southerncharmries.com Click on the blog and you can search for tulip or spring or St. Patrick's Day wreaths. Uh, we've got a lot of tutorials over there. Let me know in the comments below what you want me to make next. Bye.